Hello everyone, today we're going to revisit Oxford Blue from Diamine. I did a video of this a while back and um, today I just want to experiment a bit with this, one of my favorite inks on different papers, just to see how it behaves. And I also want to see, uh, fool around with it a bit, just to see what goes on. Um, I did this swatch just a, an hour or so ago and I was just wanting to see how it reacts with water. So I'm just going to drop a few bits of water on it and see if anything happens. And I'll, I'll just leave that. I also have a Q-tip and I'm just going to see what happens there. It's just, and we'll come back to that. <laughs> I'm not being very scientific here. I'm not scientific. Um, but I like to see how ink, different inks behave on different papers. And they do actually often... You know, they often do react differently on papers, uh, certain papers. Um, Oxford blue. It's actually one of my favorite blues because it's a, a, a dark blue. It's a blue, a blue black. It's the type of blue that I find works well in whatever pen I put it in. Um, and actually, actually, it's actually made some pens that I have uh, perform better to me. Um, I put this in my, um, Sailor Pro Gear with a extra fine nib that, uh, is like a nail, but Oxford Blue really works with it in that pen, uh, better than any other ink I've put in it there. It's what I would call a professional ink. It's one of those inks that you could put, put in a pen and take to the office and, uh, but it's also beautiful on a journal or just writing. There's so many, um, things it's good for right and uh i have it in my my snorkel and we're just going to do a little ink swatch on these different papers that i have and i'm going to do a writing sample just to see how it feels and i'll try to explain as i go i'm also getting very low <laughs> i might have to buy a new bottle um now, Diamine, it's an English company. Uh, they've been making inks for over 150 years. Um, and it, their inks are among my favorite. Uh, they have some colors that I just really love, you know? And, uh, and they also bring out like area ex, area uh, specific exclusives for different companies or different regions and uh, they're famous for their ink vent calendar so that's just empty right there okay so let's take a look <laughs> as I said I'm not very scientific and I'm t I seem to be hitting the camera again one thing I can never get past I like the ink bottles these bottles particularly um they aren't overly fancy, but they're attractive and they're incredibly stable. It's a square bottle. You would have to work really hard to spill that. Not to say that it, I probably won't um, do that someday. Now looking at these, um, I'm just looking at it and see what happens. The uh, Staples matte photo, it's just a, a photo paper really seems to be sucking in, but it's taking a while to dry. Um, the Baron Fig, it dried very quickly. The Claire Fontaine. Uh, the Lystrom, it's still wet. The Rhodia, it seems dry. Oh, the Pelican is... looks dry. And the Tomo River paper, it's still just a little wet. Anyway, interesting. I'm just going to do a writing sample, um, and then I'm going to flip the paper over. Oh, I forgot to do the lalo. Where is that? Hmm. G lalo, whatever it's called. What I'm going to do is, I'll, after I do a writing sample, I'll flip it over. We'll take a look at the back, see if it ghosts or shout, uh, bleeds through, things like that. Yeah. I know, this is kind of boring, but I'm having fun. That's all that counts, right? 
interesting watching what happens. Some of them... Uh, so this is Tomo. Tomoe? Tomo. <laughs> it's from an endless recorder. It's the original paper. It's... And I'm out of ink. <laughs> I'm going to fill this up. So this is an... Uh, this is the Schaefer snorkel. You undo the cap. The snorkel comes out. See that? And you pull that back. And you push down. Turn. I don't know if I got a really good fill. I'm not trying to. I'll do a better job later. So. Excuse my handwriting. Um, I actually do have better handwriting than this. <laughs> I'm sort of looking over a camera, looking at a camera, um, trying not to hit a camera, which I always fail at, and just trying to see what's going on. The Pelican paper. I'm interested in seeing how this works. Feels nice. Um, it's very smooth paper. Um, I had a, I forget what ink I was using and it really sort of feathered, um, <laughs> quite a bit. So this paper is very funny. It has a texture to it. Um, and I noticed that some inks really skip on it. Like, uh, like there's like a, a tooth to it, but actually the Oxford blue is working quite well. Um, you can see almost like a little pixelation right there. That's probably because I've, uh, moved on to the leather, but to me that looks okay. This is Rhodia, um, from a, my my, my my desk pad and one of my favorite papers works really well with almost everything and it's working quite nicely with this blue the Lystrum um, once again one of my favorite papers and it really actually works I like it more on the Ro Lystrum than I did on the Rhodia, oddly enough. Um, I can't say why. It just seems more intense. It seems to seems more ink is going down on the paper. Anyway, it's picking out more paper. This is um, Claire Fontaine, ninety grams per square meter. I like the Lystrum better. Uh, <laughs> Claire Fontaine is a nice paper, but for some reason that just feels different. Uh, okay, this is just cheap, literally cheap staples photo paper. I have a, I had printed an art card on it. And I'm curious to see what works the best on it. And as you can see, it really sucks up the ink. And this is a fairly fine nib, right? So uh, actually, it's really pulling it in. <laughs> And I've been looking um, for an ink that works well on this. But, you know, that's, that's if you're writing a card, that's, I guess, fine. <laughs> you know, it it's really sucks in. Um, I'm looking at the Lilac Night, and it seems to have worked better than the Oxford Blue on this paper. But then again, almost, I, I would not call staples matte photo paper uh fountain pen friendliest you know uh <laughs> it's really not meant for fountain pens and this is baron fig uh i use this as a sketchbook and um you know that feels nice it looks good what we're gonna do now is flip the page paper over and just see what happened. Did it go through? Is there ghosting? Whatever. 
Oh yeah. It really came through the, actually all the inks I've put down so far really bleed through on the swatches and, it, and a little bit on the writing too. Baron Fig. Um, I, t I use it as a sketchbook. Like uh, it's a beautiful notebook, but I, it, you know, it's not, um, and it's supposed to be fountain pen friendly, but as you can see, it's bleeding through quite a bit. Um, oddly enough, the photo paper, even though it absorbs a lot of ink, like it sucks the ink in, it's not bleeding through in any way. It's barely even ghosting. You can just barely make out the fact that it's ghosting there. So the ink is being sucked into the surface, but it doesn't seem to go all the way through the page. Um, trying to, it's, that's a heavier paper. I'm going to, if I'm trying to think what it is, it's probably a 300 grams per square meter. So it's a, it's a heavyweight paper. Uh, the Claire Fontaine, it, uh, hmm, okay, that's interesting. Claire Fontaine didn't bleed through, uh, as much. That's interesting. Hmm, didn't bleed through at all. And I don't know if that's just an ink splat from where I set the paper down. That's just, uh, but you can see that the um, Monteverde California teal did bleed through for some reason, okay, uh, from the last time I did that. Uh, let's see, this is Lystra Night, and uh, just a little bit of bleed through, but that's a big splot. There's ghosting, of course, you can see the writing, but, you know, I use, this is my go-to uh, journal paper. And I've never really had a problem with, with inks bleeding through that paper. This is the Rhodia dot pad. Actually very, no ghosting at all. Um, the California teal did come through on that paper. You can see ghost, like there's no bleed through, but there's, and there is ghosting from the lines, of course, but uh, that, it's, it's a light paper. It's, it's, you're going to get that. The G Lalo Paris. <laughs> uh, a little bit of bleed through, just a little bit. The California teal really came through a lot of these papers. Uh, uh, Monteverde, very nice ink though. And of course, you know, you do see ghosting, but I'm holding it up to the light and yeah. Hmm, nice. This is Endless Recorder, Tomo River. And I, I'm going to say that's just picked up from the other page. Uh, didn't bleed through though. Ghosting, of course, things like that. Didn't feather. My handwriting was atrocious because the pen ran out of ink and also, oh, my handwriting's atrocious. But I love writing with fountain pens. So there. So this is the Pelican uh, pad. I got this from the Pelican Hub, actually. And it's, an, it's a very nice paper. Um, I think it was a gray that really I had problems with. I'll have to find, re remember what that was, which gray it was. And uh, no feathering or anything like that occurring. And it doesn't didn't bleed through. Once again, the California teal, whatever reason, it bled through. <laughs> but the, the Oxford blue didn't. Quite like the, I, you know, Monteverde inks, they sort of are lubricated ink up there or something. Uh, there's some formulation. So I'm wondering if that's unique to Monteverde, where there's some kind of lubricant in the ink. And it... Uh, goes through the paper more than the others. I will have to look into that. If you know, actually, let me know in the comments. Is Monteverde ink prone to bleed through? Let's take a look. So I put a little splot of water on there. And as you can see, the it is, it's fountain pen ink. It's not, you know, not something you want to get wet. So I would not address an envelope with this ink <laughs> or if you did address an envelope take uh, the old apparently the old trick would be to take a piece of paraffin wax and after the ink's dried you rub the paraffin wax over it but what i use is a uh, platinum carbon black when i address an envelope it, it works the best and uh but yeah i wouldn't address an envelope with say oxford blue <laughs> or most fountain pen inks now as I said, this is a great ink. Uh, it looks great in all pens that I've experienced. And I, um, I think of it as one of those inks that's 
a very professional ink. It, it, if you're in a professional setting or a student at university or something like that, it's a beautiful ink, uh, easy to read, uh, easy on the eyes, and it's and it's 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 just a you know it's not there's no there's no gimmicky stuff to it that's going to be distracting, so it's it would look good on almost any notes or or documents or signatures and things like that. So anyway, I hope you liked the video. Just me fooling around on a beautiful sunny January day. And uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new around here, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. I'm always sort of messing around with stuff. And I hope you have a great day. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.